Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about a brand new Synology NAS. I know, how many times have I said that recently? It really is a big, big time for network attached storage at the moment. It's at that point of the year when we see a lot of really good prosumer hardware where we lead into the start of next year where there's a load of great business class stuff. But this year being the exception to many rules with so many things changing and the supply chain, chain, uh, supply chain changing in a number of places, Unsurprisingly, the tail end of this year is just covered in new releases and today is no exception. Today I want to talk about the follow-up surveillance now from Synology and I'll talk about the new DVA3221. Now that is a model ID I'm bound to get wrong several times throughout the course of this video. There's numbers all over the shop in that. But ultimately, this is the follow-up to uh, early last year's DVA3219. It is a surveillance optimized NAS system. This is a new four bay that's stylized in a very similar way to that of the DVA3219 last year. This four bay uses the same chassis and a number of very, very familiar components. In fact, when I've broken these specifications down, there's only two core ways in which these two NASs are different, but they are very important to surveillance. But let's talk a little bit about this device, the 3219 to one and why it might be a very very good NAS for business users out there because although I say this is a surveillance solution it is worth bearing in mind this is not a system that's dedicated to surveillance much like a number of other disk station solutions this does find a line where it supports both DSM and the complete surveillance station package and that second one's important too and I'll touch on that later in the video but first let's talk about the hardware of this device as mentioned, this is a four bay device with each one of those bays supporting the very latest uh, SATA three and a half inch media drives from Seagate Ironwolf and WD Red and you know a number of enterprise class drives as well as of course surveillance class drives as well from WD Purple and Seagate Skyhawk. Now these drives are available currently in up to 18 terabytes recently released with whispers in the background of drives arriving in 20 TB and that's taken advantage of heat assisted magnetic recording in a number of different ways in which different proprietary um, hard drive vendors have gone their own way on that but there is different heat and energy assisted magnetic drives largely being the way forward on those larger capacities so four bays of storage is by no means a limitation even in a one or two disc uh, raid environment and now on the table here i've got the 1621 uh, plus just to give you some idea about the chassis um, it's worth highlighting of course it's a four bay and i'm sure the graphics on screen somewhere now this four bay is not your limit you can add more drives later on it supports two of the eSATA based dx517 expansion so this four bay can become a total of 14 bays of storage with the two five bays bolted on the side and that uh, system does support both traditional raid like raid 0 raid 1 raid 5 raid 6 raid 5 i'm um, sorry raid 10 raid 50 and raid 60 but also Synology Hybrid RAID 1 and 2. In other words, their own fluid RAID system that will allow you to have one or two disks of parity. But bear in mind, two disks of parity on this 4-bay, that's 50% of your capacity out the window. So it's definitely worth bearing that in mind. But Synology Hybrid RAID, always a popular feature from this vendor. The ability to mix and match drives later on in the system's life and have a more gradual scale up of storage is definitely something that a lot of people want and is always weirdly absent in the XS series for reasons of performance that we've talked about before. Now, on top of that, uh, not just those storage base, I'm not seeing any reports, uh, particularly from the Synology Taiwanese pages that have recently gone live. There's no mention of M2 NVMe caching. Um, again, that may be amended, but I very, very much doubt it. If it is, it will probably be added there on screen, but if you're not seeing it, it's not there. Um, on top of that, the internal hardware of this device, there's a CPU that I know I can hear a number of you getting a little bit of grumble about. It is the Intel um, Atom that we've seen before, the C3538. It's a quad-core 2.1 gigahertz processor there, and it is an Intel, it is 64-bit architecture, and it is an x86 chip, but it's not exactly a world I mean, a mind-blowing processor there. I know a number of you aren't a huge fan, but it has to be said that processor does have a lovely um, sort of height of PCIe lanes, uh, sorry, PCIe lanes inside, which allow it to bolt on a number of things, something I'll touch on later on. But there also is support of DDR4 memory, with the system arriving with 8 gig of memory by default, and that's DDR4 non-ECC memory. So no error code correction memory here, 
but the system does support ECC memory as well. And that 8 gig over two 4 gig sticks can be upgraded up to 32 gig of official memory, which again, the more cameras you're going to have, the more memory you're going to need. Larger, more enterprise class cameras like Axis at the top end, they are hungry beasts. And we've got a number of cameras here on the table that have varying quality levels and utility, both indoors, outdoors, dome and more that we featured on the channel before. And once they reach the 4K, and particularly if you touch on above 15 frames per second, which I know isn't much, but once you enter 4K resolutions above that quantity, you need some memory to deal with the throughput of large data coming into the NAS system there. So again, 8 gig, 4 gig more than the uh, 3219 that came before it is a welcome addition there. Now, it's also worth highlighting in terms of ports and connections, it has the four 1GBE LAN ports on the rear, which I guess in this environment, I personally am going to let go. I know a number of us are not overly keen on Synology's rather steadfast refusal to introduce larger than one gigabit connections onto their standard series uh, of devices. But on a surveillance system with very, very few cameras adopting anything, you know, even close to higher than one GBE, with most of them, even at their, you know, in their pomp, really pushing data through, not going to need more than one G. I don't think the NAS needs more than one G. And the fact that it's got four one GBE RJ45 slots that could be lagged together to get four G over a connected switch, and let's face it, if you're going to have lots of cameras, you've probably got a PoE switch somewhere, then I think 1GBE is fine on this. There's also, along with the SATA port to those expansions, there is USB 3 ports as well, which support external storage devices and can be utilized for a number of network interface upgrades, official, and a few little bits and bobs along the way. Remember, this surveillance solution isn't just there for surveillance. It can be utilized as a traditional NAS would be with DSM's range of applications, ranging from Synology Office to Synology Drive, to Synology Chat, to Synology Mail, a Virtual Machine Manager, you know, Active Backup, Hyper Backup. All of those tools are available to you in this. It's not like some of the NVR series or the VS series, which are dedicated surveillance devices, which don't give you the advantage of DSM. This does find a balance between both. Now, let's face it, you want to know about surveillance, and this is a DVA NAS solution. For those that didn't follow my content last year on the DVA3219, uh, DVA or Deep Video Analysis or Deep Video Analytics, depending on where you are in the world, long story short, that is, although the majority of Synology NAS systems arrive with surveillance support and the ability to have multiple cameras dotted around a home or business environment, recording those streams, having live alerts, having um, real-time information about um, the cameras and the feeds and being able to really focus down on different feeds and lowering stream rates and stuff like that, all with a control board that you can view online or via the client applications. All of the NASIs have that. But DVA or surveillance solutions like this one that are GPU powered that we'll touch on in a bit, these allow for deep video analytics and deep learning. So ultimately when the cameras are recording in real time, the system is technically watching the footage and it's smart enough to know the difference between objects. It knows the difference between people. It can uh, identify and log faces. It can be utilized for people counting, locational counting, locational tracking, um, creating um, on-screen lines that you should not cross. It will have the ability, for example, to recognize if the camera was pointed at me here and I moved out of shot, it would know that a human has walked out of shot. Or if I'm a face that's not in the recognized directory of faces, know that I should not be here. On top of that, they've always shown us demos from previous trade shows and up to recently, particularly in our software review, that you can recognize not only areas that people shouldn't go, but objects that should not enter that arena. So you may have to case that a a camera that's watching an average sidewalk or pavement, definitely there's that one by the way, watching a pavement and then someone walks along and leaves a bag on the floor and walks away, you want a camera that knows that someone's left a pot potential suspicious package. If you're watching a camera, watching a busy street full of people moving left, right and centre, you want to know if a vehicle mounts the curb or something happens there that shouldn't be. You need to know that your camera can identify between these two objects, people, and other things. It's very, very important, and the DVA systems can do that. And why can they do that? 
because they have additional graphical resources. Much like the DVA-32-19, the brand new DVA-3221, I'm getting that name right, I don't think I've got it wrong yet, you tell me in the comments. This system arrives with a NVIDIA GeForce graphics card inside, the GTX 1650. Uh, which is a marked improvement over the GTX 1050 Ti in the previous generation with high performance, um, same amount of memory in 4GB of DDR5 on board, but with a higher frequency and just general better performance. It means that not only are you going to get faster results of analysis from those cameras into the NAS and therefore tailored uh, alerts around them, but you can do more of them with more resources readily available to you uh, on the card. Now, the system itself, as I say, is very, very unique. Both the DVA-3221, who nearly got me there, and the DVA-3219 are the only two AI-powered and deep, uh, deep uh, learning surveillance NASes from Synology. They do have other uh, Synology systems for surveillance, and again, the NVR-1219 and the VS-960, and there's a few others in that series as well. They are dedicated surveillance modules, and one thing they have that this new system doesn't have, rather annoyingly, is the new one does not have HDMI out, which is super, super annoying, if you ask me, because although Synology is generally kept um, HDMI and direct video access to their systems ex exceedingly at arm's length. I think there's been maybe four systems in the last six, seven years that have got HDMI on the outside that allow you to do a KVM setup, keyboard, video, mouse, and thereby attaching a monitor and a keyboard and a mouse for a standalone surveillance station. These two, and this particularly this new one, this dedicated um, graphics card to surveillance. You can't use that GPU in any of the other elements of DSM. This surveillance monster, this behemoth of uh, Synology surveillance, does not have an HDMI output. It doesn't have KVM, which is super annoying because if you do take surveillance seriously, you want a dedicated terminal as well as the ability to access it over the internet or the network. Now, in the previous generation of the DVA3219, we did do a whole review for it and we even unboxed the device and inside we got to that PCIe card, that GeForce 1050 Ti card and it was that card. It was the micro um, compact efficient card that's part of this family that's designed for more efficient graphic utilization which is perfect for a NAS. But when you looked at that card, it had an HDMI output and a DVI. It was just covered by the chassis, they chose not to adopt those connections. And the DVA 322, oh, there you go, I got it wrong. 3221 does not have the ability to utilize the HDMI app, and I'm willing to bet that card's got it on board. Now, all of the comparisons that I've seen from the websites, which I'm sure have referenced on screen, if not in the NAS Compare article, do show that this newer generation card is indeed better in practically every single way. And on top of that, this new system arrived with four gig of memory on top, which we know already Synology memory is not the cheapest. It does make it a good system. And the fact that both of those systems, old and new gen, both arrive with up to support up to 32 simultaneous high def cameras and eight camera licenses included is another way in which this system justifies itself. It does arrive with three years of manufacturer's warranty, much like a lot of plus series NASes, so you are getting a very good system here. But I will say that lack of HDMI does annoy the hell out of me. Now the system does arrive for about, at the moment with no price clearly quoted, I'm going to go out on a limb and assume that this system is going to arrive at a very similar price point to that of its predecessor, arriving somewhere at the 1500 to maybe 1600, 1650 perhaps with tax. Um, the card inside is a good couple of years, at least better than its predecessor, and the extra memory shouldn't be sniffed at. But remember, you are buying a traditional four bay NAS here that's atom powered with this great support of surveillance and that GPU card and the extra memory inside and the eight camera licenses. So as daunting as that price point may seem for a four bay NAS, if you compare it against well, like a DS920 that's changing hands these days for about four or 500 quid, it is still a very impressive device indeed and very unique in the product family from Synology, especially with that surveillance support 
and DVA support to the high degree that it is. Thank you so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this video or want to learn more about this device, click like to help me know you liked it. Click subscribe to learn more and visit the links in the description to both NASCompares and Span.com to learn more about this device and the rest of the Synology family and learn how to get hold of one of these bad boys for you and your home and office environment. I will see you next time.